Acoustic theory has led us to understand the properties of sound waves themselves, and through this study, we can better understand what makes our music work. I'm the Classical Nerd, and this is the Overtone Series. When you strike middle C on a keyboard, you hear middle C, as long as it's tuned correctly. Fun fact, you actually hear more than just this middle C. You see, when you strike middle C on a piano keyboard, it's actually vibrating a string. And that string is not just vibrating at one consistent speed. The string is actually vibrating in many different ways. First of all, the entire string vibrates, which is what creates middle C. But this string vibrates at perfect mathematical intervals. You have a string of a certain length, it's going to vibrate at half the length, and a third of the length, and a quarter of the length, and so on. Theoretically, this series is infinite. So the second harmonic is half the string, and this corresponds to the C an octave above middle C. Third harmonic is G above that, then the C again, then the E, and then the G, and so on. If you strike all these harmonics at one time, you get a very full and rich sound. Each of the upper voices is strengthening an overtone of the lowest note. So we've gone C, C, G, C, E, G. So what's the harmonic above that? Well, one might be tempted to pick C again, but that's actually not the case. It's not even a note on the keyboard. Well, it's close. It's close enough to B-flat that we can consider it B-flat. But weird things happen when you tune pianos, and you know, there's always a give and take with how you're tuning things properly. The way pianos are tuned now, the B-flat on the piano is just a tiny bit more sharp than the true harmonic. The difference really is minimal, but when you put them in the context of a chord, using the pure harmonic seventh sounds much sweeter than just using the regular old B-flat on the keyboard. The difference is very minimal. Then you have C, D, E, and some kind of F. Uh, this is one of those in-between things again. It's not quite F and it's not quite F sharp. It's kind of a F half sharp. Most people avoid this one because it just sounds really out of tune, but some composers have made use of this. Above this F half sharp, things get much more closer together and it becomes fundamentally unusable. But these overtones continue theoretically into infinity. They simply get closer and closer and closer together the further you go up. But that's all theoretical. Let's focus instead on some practical applications of this series. In the big scheme of things, there are some benefits to this. Say you are writing for an orchestra and you really want to build up a nice thick chord. We have a note on the bottom and then you simply have to fill in the overtones above that and automatically you have a very rich, resonant sound. All brass instruments work on the overtone principle. Back when brass instruments were first invented, they didn't have keys or valves or slides and so they simply had to use their lips in order to find notes on the harmonic series, the natural harmonic series, of their instrument. When the keys and valves and slides were added, the tubing length was changed and so you could get a fully chromatic scale. String players are also called upon to produce harmonics. By simply lightly touching specific parts of their strings called nodes, they can sound these harmonics, which have a very eerie sound. Harps use harmonics to get special tone qualities, and it extends to modern piano technique. Some composers like Henry Cowell and George Crumb have called for pianists to take off the lid of the instrument, reach inside, and play harmonics on the piano strings much like the string players would play harmonics on their instruments. This is part of what's called string piano technique. Unfortunately, that's a video for another time. 